What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In the last episode we completed three side quests here in Kakariko Village, then finished up the last shrine in the Dueling Peaks region. In this episode I'd like to get back on track and do some more main story stuff, but before we do that, yeah check it out I scanned in some more amiibo, hooray! I believe I scanned in my Archer Link amiibo and my Smash Brothers Zelda amiibo. And I have to say, thank you guys so much for leaving all the comments about what the other Breath of the Wild amiibo do, and also what the Zelda 30th Anniversary amiibo do. But I should mention that, um, I don't actually have any of those amiibo, nor have I been able to find them like when I go out to the store. The only reason I got the Archer Link amiibo was because I got lucky and they happened to have like three of them in stock as I was picking up my Switch and this game, so I decided I would buy one. But um, any other time like I've been out and about looking for them, uh, I have not been able to find them. I would definitely like to show them off if I can, especially because I know the 30th anniversary amiibo give you some pretty cool gear, but at this point it really doesn't seem likely. I'll keep looking though. Anyways, before we head off to a new area, what do you say we double back to the Hateno Ancient Tech Lab because last time we were there, Pura was telling us that if we brought her some ancient materials, she could upgrade our Sheikah Slate, and we did fight some guardians just a few episodes ago, so we have a couple of those materials, and I figure we should see if we can do at least one of those upgrades before we go, because even one of them will help us out quite a bit. So we'll do what we can, and at best we'll be able to do all of them, but uh, I really don't think we have enough materials for that right now. Alright, so there's actually a ton of stuff that I want to accomplish in this video, so much so that I'm not sure I'll be able to do it all, but um, if we move fast enough, we might be able to get everything done. So, hello Pura, how you doing girl? Good morning. Something on your mind? Yeah, something good actually. Aha! I'm glad you asked. If you bring me some ancient materials, I'll power up your runes. You'll need three ancient screws to power up your Sheikah sensor. You'll need three ancient shafts to power up your remote bombs. You'll need three ancient cores to power up stasis. If we're on the same page, stop staring at me. Hurry up and bring me some ancient materials. Alright, alright, calm down, I got some. Snap! Did you bring me any ancient materials? I sure did. Now then, in exchange for those ancient materials, I'll power up a rune on your Sheikah Slate. Alright, sounds good to me. So, which rune do you want to power up? Uh, let's start with Remote Bomb. I think that's the only one we can do right now anyways. Remote Bomb power up time. Yahoo! For that I'll need three ancient shafts. Alright, sounds fair. Three ancient shafts and an epic snap. Here I go. Alright, fine. Snap! Hey ho, got it. Okay, then Remote Bomb upgrade underway. Guidance Stone lock removed. Now, let's do this thing! Sheikah Slate Authenticated. Enhancing Remote Bomb Rune. And now we have Remote Bomb Plus. Hooray! So the blast radius is larger and um, the explosion does more damage. Remote Bomb Upgrade complete. <laughs> Yahoo! My little Guidance Stone did the trick, hee <laughs> hee. If you have any other runes you'd like to power up, just let me know. Alright, will do. Um, let me actually check my inventory real quick because uh, I'm not sure we can do anything else. Yeah, doesn't actually look like it. So, unfortunately, that's the only upgrade that we can do right now. But, um, you know what? It was better than nothing. So, now that that is done, I want to travel all the way. Um... Actually, I want to go, like, right up over here where Epona is because I know there's a couple of shrines in this area and it also happens to be fairly close to, like, the next region of Hyrule that I want to explore, so everything sort of works out. Plus, uh, 
this is going to put us right next to Epona. Now, sadly, Epona is like still on that ridge because this shrine is the shrine with like all the flowers around it. So, if we were to like try and get Epona back, we'd have to like go around and climb up a ridge. But, um, I think there's actually a couple of stables nearby too. So, I can sort of use that and abuse that to like get my horse back. And then we can go right off into the sunset in search of some other stuff. So, even though we did spawn in at the shrine, I think if we step on these flowers, the lady will still get pissed at us, and the game will just, like, respawn us at the entrance to the shrine. So we do sort of need to go, like, backwards through this flower maze, if you will. But, um, it's really not even a maze, because it's kind of easy to just, like, walk around just like that, no big deal. And we're already done. Um, you know, if there is a Korok leaf around here, I can make use of that raft, but... Um, I don't really see one, and I'm not sure if that lady will get mad at me or not if I chop down a tree, so... You know what? We'll just swim it. Why risk it? No big deal. We should be able to make this, like, before we run out of stamina. And, like, if I'm being totally honest, out of, like, everything in this game, I kind of wish swimming didn't consume stamina, or at least not as much stamina as it does. Running, climbing, I get it, but like, swimming? Like, come on, man. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Um, now the reason why I came over here is because I'm fairly certain that there is a shrine, like, right over this ridge. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and in case you're wondering, um, if you run out of, uh, stamina while you're swimming, you sort of just, like, drown and the game respawns you to the last area where you were touching solid ground. Um... Now, if memory serves me well, this shrine should be right next to a stable. And generally speaking, the game will always do that. Like, anytime you find a stable, there is probably a shrine fairly close by just to give you that teleportation location. That way you can um, easily go and visit that stable and get your horse back. So, this sort of works out for us. New shrine, new stable, and hey, that's a new character we haven't yet seen. I was wondering when we were going to bump into him. Guess what? It's our boy Beetle. What's up, dude? Yeah. Hey, I don't believe I've made your acquaintance. The name is Beetle, but you can call me... Actually, let's just stick with Beetle. But even if you forget my face, you can remember me by my Beetle-shaped backpack. Despite these dangerous times, you'll find me traveling all over Hyrule to fulfill your shopping needs. I stock many special bugs and must-have items for travelers, and I always charge a fair price. Or my name's not Beetle. I also buy all sorts of things. If you're in need of rupees, gemstones in particular fetch a high price. How can I help you today? Alright, let's see what you got, Beetle. I'm sure I have something you'll find useful. So please have a good look. Alright, um... 5 arrows, 30 rupees. You know what? That seems like an okay deal. Why not? We'll buy them. Thank you very much, Beetle. And I think that's really all I need right now, so see you later. By the way, you're going to want to try to talk to Beetle every day if you can, because some days will be Customer Appreciation Day, and uh, when that happens, Beetle will actually give you a pretty useful item, so talk to him every chance you get. Alright, while we're here, let's activate this shrine and uh, see what's waiting for us inside. This one should be a pretty simple one if memory serves me well, so shouldn't take us too long, then we'll grab a Pona and uh, be on our way. My goal is to like take on maybe three or four more shrines and also activate a Sheikah Tower in the next region. Not sure if we'll be able to do that, but um, that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm trying to go as fast as I can, trust me. And I figured it was about time we get back to like doing stuff for the main story because... You can very easily forget about the story in this game and just get lost exploring the huge open world, but, uh, yeah, there is a plot, and we do kind of want to follow it. To you who sits foot in this shrine, I am whatever. In the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. Okay, so this is Metal Connections. This one's actually really, really easy. Um, let's start by climbing up these metal blocks over here. Also, why are these, like, not butt up flush against this wall because that's where they're supposed to be. That's a little bit odd, but whatever, not a big deal. Still managed to get up here. And inside this chest we have some amber. Nice, not bad, not bad at all. 
Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys a nice pro strat that pretty much everyone probably knows by now. But uh, yeah, if you grab the bottom cube and very slowly just uh, drag the entire pillar across the floor, you can sort of move all of them at the same time instead of like unstacking them and then restacking them wherever you need them. So saves you a little bit of time. And ooh, that got a little bit wobbly towards the end there. Thankfully, none of them actually toppled over. Uh, so let's climb this thing again because up here we're gonna find the final piece to this puzzle. So using like this bridge piece and those three blocks, we need to figure out how we can reach that Sheikah Monk. Um, it's actually not too hard. Don't overthink this one like I did. Like, when I first did this shrine, I thought like, oh, I know, I'll make a catapult. Don't make a catapult, guys. Not a good idea. <laughs> I ended up killing myself by trying to make that catapult. It never worked for me, so don't try it. Instead, there's a much simpler solution, so let's try and put these blocks around. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, man. I was so close. Ah, that stinks. I felt like I was gonna get through the entire thing without toppling that tower over, but no, right the last second, of course, I mess it up. Oh well, what are you gonna do? So let's just restack this real quick, and you know what? That might actually be slightly too close to that ending platform, so I may need to move the entire thing over just a little bit, but I'll see if I can make it work first, because it might just, you know, work out alright. But yeah, once you stack those blocks, what you want to do is grab this flat platform and sort of like make a diagonal bridge, if you will. And there is no way this is going to work, is there? Please, maybe? Oh, jeez. Okay, that was very dangerous. Um, Yeah, you really don't want those things landing on top of you because you will take damage, as you just saw. All right, let's carefully just move this over a tad. Uh, Probably about there should do it. And then, now if we stack this up there... It should just like lean on both that top platform and these blocks without sliding off. Yeah, there we go. See, not too hard. Way simpler than trying to actually make a catapult. Like I have no idea <laughs> what I was thinking when I first went through this shrine. Um, I wonder if it's even possible. Someone's probably done it, right? Like I'm convinced it's probably possible. I just set it up wrong and. Honestly, that is something I like about this game, because each of these shrines, if you will, they're sort of, um, you know, a nice mind exercise, especially if you find, like, an alternative solution to one of the puzzles, because I'm sure, I'm sure that there are, like, a ton of puzzles in this game that have more than one solution. So, of course, there's, like, the intended or the correct solution, but, um, there's gotta be, like at least a handful of other ways that you could solve some of these puzzles, especially puzzles like that that involve, you know, physics and just a couple of different objects that you can manipulate around to do various different things. And I think that'd be really cool to see all the different ways that you could solve them because that would not only showcase, like, the creativity of the player base, but also just how the developers probably thought of some of those alternative solutions, like just theoretically, if you will. So, I don't know, I just think it's really cool how you can sort of design a game like that. That being said, though, let's grab Epona and uh, start on our journey. We got quite a ways to go, and we will be making several stops along the way, so let's get to it then. Come on, girl. Giddy up. Now, at this point, if you guys are confused at, like, where you should go next, well, hopefully you've talked to some characters or done a couple of side quests like I have, because... I think like two or so different characters mentioned the word Laneru to us, so that's kind of where we're going next, like that part of Hyrule, and um, that will eventually lead us into more of the plot and also the first temple of the game. So that's sort of why you do want to talk to NPCs. You know what? I will just kill that guy and save that NPC. Occasionally, while you are out adventuring, um, various other NPCs might be in battle with uh some of the enemies around Hyrule, and if you do save them like we just did, you can talk to them and sometimes they will give you like an item or two. They're never really good items per se, but um, you can get them if you want to. I'm not gonna bother going back for that one just cause I really don't care whatever it is that she would have given us. Um, so yeah, that's why you want to talk to a lot of the NPCs in this world because not only can like, you do side quests for a lot of them, 
They will also just give you a lot of information and sort of point you in the right direction if you don't know where to go. Now again, you don't need to talk to them, like if you want to, you can just go out and explore, and certainly there is no problem in doing that whatsoever. Like, that's definitely a strategy that I did when I was first playing through the game, like, I just saw something in the distance, and I ran towards it, and I was able to get through the game just fine, no problems at all, like, I didn't need someone telling me where to go or anything like that, but I understand this might be a lot of people's first open world game, and you might not be accustomed to you know, gathering information through various other characters, or you might feel lost in this giant Hyrule not knowing where to go next if you want to just sort of like follow the main plotline. So, I figured I would mention that because, honestly, I think this game does a lot of things for the open world genre. In fact, I would say this is probably one of the best games to give to someone who maybe isn't too familiar with the open world genre of games. And that's coming from someone who's played his fair share of open world games in the past. Like, I've played Skyrim, I've played Fallout, stuff like that. So, I'm pretty well experienced with open world games. But, I gotta say, Breath of the Wild does a lot of things to organically teach the player and get them used to this type of game. So, maybe if you're like apprehensive about starting an open world game because it just seems so massive, Take a look at Breath of the Wild, like, it does a really good job at taking this large world and giving it to you in small chunks, even though you can go anywhere you want, um, it sort of gives that to you gradually as you play the game, and also teaches you the mechanics that most open world games use, so, I don't really know if I'm making any sense, hopefully you guys understand what I'm talking about, but, um, yeah, I could go on and on about the game design in Breath of the Wild, because there is just so much that I like about this game, and so much that, in my opinion, this game does right, that, uh, I could probably talk about it for hours on end, which is good, because this is gonna be a really long Let's Play, so I probably will get most of my thoughts out while we go through and play through the game, but, that being said, let's see what this shrine has in store for us. To you who sets foot in this shrine, I am whatever, in the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. And this is the Sunken Scoop Trial. This one's actually pretty fun because we get to use Magnesis and Physics and all that good jazz. So, wow, I cannot believe I missed all of those, like, little tiny floating orbs. Let me try and grab this one real quick. So what you want to do here is, um, try and actually get the orb to fall out of the scooper that we have because, obviously, there is a switch over here and we need one of those orbs to go inside. I'm not really sure why they give you like so many orbs because you really only need one of them and as far as I know you can't like lose any of them let me try and actually grab one more and bring it with me because I can save a little bit of time that you know what never mind I dropped it so doesn't even matter like I could pick it up I guess and try and throw it back in there um you know what screw it never mind not even gonna bother press the wrong button it's actually like way easier just to grab another one from um this water pool anyways, but this one's a little bit different, so what you want to do here is try and like rock this one out of the scooper. It's a little bit harder, but if you build up enough momentum or just slam it against the wall, apparently that works too, um, you will get it to fall out and hopefully it stays up there. And while it's up there, what you want to do is take the scooper and uh, place it right on top of that large button because it'll pop up and then hopefully the ball will fall in there, activate the switch, and drain the water. So, yeah, that's really all there is to this trial, but, um, I don't know, man, I really, really like this one. Like I said, a lot of the trials are just super creative and fun. I like seeing all the various different ways that they've managed to use the runes in just, like, small objects that are either magnetic or non-magnetic, and just water and other elements like that, too make each shrine sort of unique. Sure, the interior aesthetics are kind of all the same, and that might get old after a while, but um, at least the contents of each of the shrines uh, is all different and interesting, so it's good enough for me. All right, so now that that is done, though, um, I actually only want to take on two more shrines and also activate the Sheikah Tower for this region of Hyrule. That way, you know, we could actually see where we're going considering our mini-map right now is almost entirely useless. Like, it's just a 
blotch of blue nothingness, so getting that data would be very, very helpful. And oh yeah, I forgot these guys are still out here. Let's be a little bit careful. Oh, of course, there's one over there that I didn't see. Awesome, great. Alright, whatever. Let's just run the heck away then. So, um, yeah, Pona's way back there. Actually, will this work? Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. Dang, that stinks. Um, yeah, there's a shrine over to my right, and also in front of us, I think that is a whiz robe. I'm not sure exactly what the enemy is called, but I'm pretty sure it's a whiz robe. I hate them in this game. Like, whatever the enemy is, I absolutely hate it. There's a couple of different, like, archetypes of those enemies for all the different elements. All of them are equally as annoying, but, um, above all else is the electric variant, which is what that one was. I would not even recommend, like, fighting those things until you have an arsenal of bomb arrows at your disposal, because, <laughs> just trust me, they are the most annoying thing in this game. To even go one step further, I would say any electric base enemy is, um, ten times harder than any other variant of them, just because I feel like electricity, that status is just broken in this game, especially if you're in, like, a wet environment, like, it even gets amplified, and I'm pretty sure the game developers realize that, because some of the hardest bosses in this game all use electricity. It's just not fun to deal with, so... Yeah, there are, like, different elixirs and, um, clothing combinations that you can get that sort of give you a little more resistance to electricity, but nothing, like, completely nullifies it, and, uh, it does give you some really annoying side effects. Like, for instance, if you get hit with a very large electric-based attack, uh, Link will just drop his weapon and shield that he's holding. It's really freaking annoying. Not even gonna lie. Um... I think the shrine of- oh, there it is. I was like, I know it's in this area somewhere. Where exactly is it? Yeah, it's by this stable over here. Ooh, and hang on. There's one of those glowing bunnies. Hello. And oh man, my bow broke. Oh! It's a money bunny! That's what they do. Oh, that's freaking sick! Yo, I did not know that. <laughs> so yeah, if you shoot the glowing rabbits, you get money. Dang. That's pretty stinking sick. Alright, thank you to whoever told me about that in the comments, because I saw those things a ton on my personal playthrough, but I never thought to shoot them in hopes of, like, getting rupees. Now that I know that, though, I'm gonna keep an eye out for them, and, uh, it's hunting season, boys. We're gonna shoot as many of those things as we can. Alright, here's that stable that I was talking about, and, uh, oh, hang on, I think that's him. That's a new character that we haven't seen before, and... Oh my gosh, yes it is! I love this guy! Sweet! Okay, you know what? We're gonna talk to him in just a second. Let's go and finish this shrine first, then we'll see what he has to say. I always talk to that guy every time I see him. He's like one of my favorite characters, dude. He's so stinking cool. Okay, first things first though, this shrine needs to be completed. I mean, I can't just leave it here without going inside and completing it. That would just be wrong. Also, I don't remember what this shrine is. See, what's kind of funny is, like, I've done a lot of these shrines in my personal playthrough, but, um, I never, like, bothered to memorize the names. So every time I go in one of these shrines, it's, like, sort of rolling the dice to see which one it is, and then I have to, like, remember back to my first playthrough and think to myself, okay, what did I do to complete that shrine? That way, you know, I can do it again for you guys on video. Um... Actually, I don't really remember this one. To you, sits foot in the shrine, I am whatever in the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. Um, hmm, this is a little bit weird. Shields from water is what it's called. I know we have to use Cryonis for this one, but, um, maybe I did this one, like, after I completed the first temple because, well, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but you'll know what I mean once we actually get to that point. Hopefully we can do this with just, uh, our Cryonis rune. We should be able to. Let me try and get that as close to the top as I can. And, uh, can we jump up here, please? Yeah, there we go. Alright, never mind. We should be fine here. Actually, it's all coming back to me now. I remember this one. I don't know why, like, that first area just kind of confused me, but, um, nope. I definitely remember this one. So, 
I'm gonna try and cheese this guy a little bit here and just knock him right into the water. Actually, I think my Guardian Sword sort of killed him in one hit anyways, but uh, yeah, if you do knock them into the water, uh, they do actually die. Alright, there- No! Oh, man! That is one thing I kind of dislike about the, uh, Cryonis rune. If you swim underneath it, even for just a second, it will break it. Which, I mean, I understand because they don't want you to, like, drown yourself. But, like, I was on my way back, man. You couldn't just stay solid for, like, an extra second. And that happens more often than you would think because a lot of the times you will be jumping to and from these, like, pillars of ice. And if you don't, like, latch on to it, uh, you will go underneath the water and then underneath the pillar and you'll have to, like, redo it again. Hey, an ancient core. That's actually really good. Nice. And, oh, that guardian did drop some stuff. I will take those ancient springs. Thank you very much. So now what you want to do is, um... Set up one more platform near the end, obviously, that way we can get up there. That ought to do it, and we should be- Oh, no, not again! See? You see what I'm talking about, guys? <sighs> Alright, so maybe that was my own fault, but, uh, I mean, you, you can see how it happens, right? You know? So, at least I made my point. <laughs> That's really all that matters at the end of the day. I made my point. I thought I was about to do it again. I swear, if I did it for a third time, I was just gonna, like, put the controller down, end the video, man. Like, at that point, there was even nothing that I could do. Um, alright, well, you know, we need to wait for this platform, so... Might as well grab one of our bows here, and, uh, try and snipe that mini guardian in the background. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, the platform. No! Wait, come back! I need you! Platform! <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, okay, thank goodness we managed to catch up to it, and you need to just die. Oh, that's a waterfall. All right, see you later. We're gone. Uh, I guess we're done with that trial. <laughs> that sort of ended a lot faster than I thought it was going to. Hey, what's up, monk? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Can I get my spirit orb, dude? <laughs> All right, we're gone, man. We're gone. Yeah, there was a lot that I forgot about that trial. I really only remembered, like, that one small portion. And even then, I think that's maybe because, like, I was remembering a different trial. So, I don't even know, man. I don't even know. But hey, we're done, so I'm pretty happy about that. And now that we are done, we can go and talk to that guy in front of the stable. I think you guys are gonna like him a lot, because I certainly do. And I'm pretty sure Nintendo actually showed this character off in, like, one of the Nintendo Directs for this game. Um, he's not really a main character, I would say, but he does pop up every now and again, and he also kind of gives you some backstory as well, so he's worth talking to every time you spot him. So, without further ado, what's up, dude? Yeah. Greetings, Traveler. How about a song? The- that there, on your hip. No, I'm sorry, it's nothing. I don't mean to pry. That's eh, fine. Are you a bird? Mm. Have you never met a Rito before? Odd. My name is Cass. As a bard, I spend my days traveling this land in search of ancient songs. Have you heard of the ancient songs of Hyrule? I uh, can't say that I have. Ancient songs. Songs that sing the praises of a hero who beat back the calamity in an age past. One of the more famous among them recounts the events of 10,000 years ago. I happen to know a song about the ancient hero. It was passed down to me by my teacher. Do you care to hear it? Yeah, let's give it a go, man. Excellent. Without further ado... The kingdom of Hyrule is a vast and storied land, off grasp in the palm of a villainous hand. A dark force of destruction, many times undone, rises once again, Ganon, the Calamitous One. But hope survives in Hyrule, for all is not lost. Two brave souls protect it, no matter the cost. A goddess blood princess and a fearless knight, they appear in each age to fight the good fight. Their battle with Ganon I've committed to song, to keep it through time, no matter how long. Now begins the second verse, listen and you'll know of their battle with Ganon 10,000 years ago.
The kingdom of Hyrule was once a land of lasting peace, a culture of such strength and wit that suffering did cease. But Ganon lurked beneath the surface, strengthening his jaws, so the ancient people of Hyrule set out to help the cause. Their efforts bore fruit in an automated force to help avert calamity by sealing it at its source. Four giant behemoths for which power never ceased, each of these titans was called a divine beast. And free-willed machines that hunted down their prey, these guardians were built to last so they could join the fray. To guide the beasts in battle, warriors were needed, so four champions pledged to see Ganon defeated. Divine Beast, Guardian, Princess, and Knight, their plan to rout Ganon was looking airtight. And when Calamity Ganon reared its head, Hyrule rose against it. The optimism of Hyrule and the Moor incensed it. Ganon raged in its assault. Boiling with hate, it gnashed its teeth and thrashed about, but it was all too late. The Guardians kept the hero safe through every hour. The Divine Beasts unleashed attacks that weakened Ganon's power. And the hero with the sealing sword struck the final blow, and the holy power of the princess sealed Ganon so. And that is the story of the brazen attack on Calamity Ganon 10,000 years back. Thank you for listening. Please come back and hear it again sometime. Maybe I will, dude. Maybe I will. Alright, so let's grab Epona and be on our way. That kind of took more time than I thought it would, so... You know what? I guess we just have to go and take on one more shrine and then call it there because I really don't think we'll be able to reach that Sheikah Tower in any reasonable amount of time. But, um, I do at least want to finish the last shrine that I planned for this video, which I believe is in this direction somewhere, so we should see it eventually. It's also kind of hard to tell, like, which tower I'm going towards. I think it's that one back there. Oh, no. Oh, that stinks. All right, I'll tell you what I'm talking about in a little bit, but, um, has something to do with that giant red orb in the sky, I'll tell you that right now. And uh, there's the shrine that I was looking for. I was wondering when that was going to happen. Like, I knew it was probably going to happen soon. I just didn't think it was going to be this episode soon. But um, I guess it has been a pretty decent amount of time since we started the game. So it makes a little sense, but uh, that's unfortunate to say the least. All right. Um, Actually, I wonder if... Oh, hang on. Oh, you there. Who's that? Over here! I'm over here! Oh, it's Azura! I apologize for calling on you so suddenly. I am Leto, a proud member of the distinguished Zora. Are you a real Hylian? I had no choice but to call upon you. Will you please spare a moment of your time? Uh, sure, why not? Oh. Thank you so very much. Do you see that tower? The one atop that mountain yonder? I needed to go upstream of Zora's River, which runs along the north side of that tower, to Inigo Bridge. Mm. I can see it in your eyes. You're asking yourself, why me? A reasonable question for a stranger accosted by a passing Zora in such a manner. But I must assure you, this venture will be very profitable for you as well. 
You see, Prince Sidon of the Zora is in desperate search of a strong Hylian. And as this is a royal request from the prince himself, it's safe to assume a generous reward is in the cards. <laughs> that is why I'm asking you to meet with Prince Sidon at Enogo Bridge, along the Zor River just upstream from here. Alright, well I guess we could do that, but um, as I was saying before you interrupted me, I wonder if we can actually climb this. It's pretty high up, and we have like no stamina increasing food, I don't think, and I don't know if we can make this also... That moon is getting pretty high up there, and once it reaches like its peak, a cutscene is going to occur, sort of explaining what exactly that phenomenon is, and oh man, this is gonna be close. Ah, oh, crap, I don't think we're gonna make it. Come on, please, Link, you're right there. No! No! Oh, man! Ah, oh, that stinks. And oh yeah, I drowned too, because I was out of stamina. Hmm, well, that kind of stinks. There was a chest up there too. Do I have any stamina food? No, no I don't. In fact, I'm actually pretty low on food. I should cook some stuff and ooh, that was a little bit weird. The lighting kind of changed for a second. Oh, here it comes. Here comes the spooky music. Ah, great. So this happens every now and again in this game. And um, it's pretty annoying when it does happen because, well, ooh, wow, okay. The lighting needs to like stop doing that. It's really, really bizarre. Well, I guess we'll just sort of wait this out then. Link. Link. Be on your guard. Ganon's power grows. It rises to its peak under the hour of the blood moon. By its glow, the aimless spirits of monsters slain in the name of the light return to flesh. Link, please be careful. Okay, so if you didn't get all that, basically a blood moon will occur like every week or so in the game. And uh, when that happens, any enemies that you have killed in the overworld will respawn, including guardians. Now, not only do the enemies respawn, um, any items that you picked up, like weapons in the overworld, will respawn too. So, there are some good and some bad things related to a blood moon. Um, the only real thing that you would, like, have to worry about is, um, if you're fighting a world boss at nighttime, and it just so happens that there is going to be a blood moon that night, if you end up defeating that world boss and then there's a blood moon, well, guess what? That world boss is going to respawn and probably kill you shortly after, so... You'll want to be careful about that, but I've actually never had that happen to myself personally, so... You know, your mileage will vary with that. Anyways, let me grab an axe real quick, that way I can, um... Whoops, hang on. Did not mean to... Alright, there we go. Let's equip the axe. I don't know what I was doing there. Um, and hopefully that burns down all those thorns. I mean, I could probably just, like, there we go, perfect. I was gonna say I could shoot, like, an arrow through the fire, and, uh, that would work as well. And that should spread all the way around this shrine, and, uh, allow us access to it. At least I hope it does. Yeah, it's going all the way around. We'll be fine, then. We'll be fine. Um, I think everything will sort of, like, stay burned away, too, like, until the next Blood Moon. And, hey, look at that updraft. Pretty nice. Um, but yeah, the Blood Moon is essentially a hard reset of the entire map so obviously it is annoying because things respawn but if you know where a particularly good weapon is you can sort of go back there and uh collect it over and over and over again which definitely is something you may want to do later on in the game i actually like the blood moon a lot because um like i said we will need to do some grinding for guardian parts much 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 later on in the game so Having the Blood Moon occur every now and again causes some of the easier to kill Guardians to respawn, meaning that you can just sort of grind off of those ones if you're not like too comfortable with taking on the harder Guardians that are found closer and closer to Hyrule Castle. Anyways, what do we got going on here? To you who sets foot in the shrine, I am whatever in the name of the Goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. And this is the Speed of Light trial. Okay, so, um, 
Well, let's see, there's a switch over there, and also this, like, spinny thing, so yeah, if we push this, that laser will start rotating, and I'm pretty sure it will hit that switch for us, and I think that causes the water in this room to rise up, so actually, we probably want to be somewhere around here, that way we can sort of, like, get into the next area. Yeah, there we go, perfect. It's all coming back to me now, guys. This shrine will not take us long at all. So, let's uh, climb up here. And now, we actually need to lower the water level again because um, there is a switch like underneath the water, right? And even though this barrel is magnetic because there's sort of like a metal strip around it, it's still mostly wood. So even if I like place it here, um, it's just gonna like float back up, watch. See, just like that. So, not really going to sink down to the bottom. So, what you want to do instead is, um, grab your Cryonis rune and make a couple of platforms for yourself because what you want to do is, uh, get yourself a vantage point where you can actually see the switch. And let me actually move this one a little bit farther back just so I get a better viewing angle. And then, what we can do is take out our lovely bow and try and hit that thing from over here. Hey, first try, not bad. All right, hopefully, oh yeah, right on top of the switch. Look at that, baby. That is what I'm talking about. Shrine completed, no big deal. Holy crud, that was awesome. All right, so that's actually the last shrine that I wanted to do in this video. It's a shame that we never made our way to the Sheikah Tower, but uh, yeah, we've actually gone on a lot longer than like I originally anticipated anyway, but um, you know what? It was worth it. One more Spirit Orb, and uh, we'll have eight, so that's pretty dang cool. And even though like we didn't finish everything I had planned for this video, we got a very large majority of it done, so I'm pretty happy about that. Plus, we also did a few things that I didn't like plan for, like talking to Cass or talking to that Zora. So, I mean, overall, we did a lot of stuff, I would say, and we are well on our way to continuing the plot of the game. Anyways, though, I think... That is where I'm going to end off this video, so if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.